from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, Atlanta housewife Phaedra Parks confirms the divorce rumors. She's officially splitting from her jailed husband, Apollo. And Twitter rants outrageous accusations, and now Amanda Bynes is back in treatment. Wendy has the latest. Plus, real-life hot topics Betsy Johnson and Tony Dovolani are here, telling us how they really feel about being eliminated from Dancing with the Stars. And R&B superstar Janae Iko performs and helps Wendy announce the nominees of this year's Soul Train Awards. Now. It's time for Hot Topics. everybody watching that, you know, happy Columbus Day, and I bet you most of my co-hosts today are teachers, because you have the day off? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Glad you all are here. So, I had a nice weekend. I spent my entire weekend in Orlando, Florida. Well, I had the best time, you know, we're, we were promoting, you know, our talk show. Um, I was on Good Day Orlando on Fox 35. How y'all do it? <laughs> John and Amy are the morning anchors, and we anchored together, and it was a lot of fun. Then um, I had some downtime, and I went to Universal Studios, where, amongst other things, we went on the Halloween, um, ho Halloween Horror Night. <laughs> which I don't really take... Uh, yeah, no, they got... I'm dipping my lip. <laughs> um, look, I don't, I don't take too kindly to be getting scared and stuff, but we went to, like... Three different haunted houses. I, we had, like, a really nice time. Anyway, um, of course, the food in between was great. I laid up at the pool. Um, I don't have pictures of that, because... <laughs> what happens at the pool stayed at the pool. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> and then... The culmination was yesterday, I co-hosted the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. There were, like, 20,000 women. <laughs> Just, you know... So many emotions. We laughed, we cried, they shared experiences. It was just a wonderful, wonderful time. So the Kevins weren't there with me. Uh, I couldn't wait to get back home. I got home, I unpacked. I, I always unpack. I cannot stand going away and then having that, that luggage still sitting and waiting, you know? Unpacked, took a shower, cleaned up. They, you, you know, they can't live without us, ladies, you know? <laughs> you know? cleaned up, and then I watched my new favorite Sunday night fix, Manzoed with Children. I was telling you last week, this show is so cute. Carolyn Manzo is wearing more weave than ever. I, was, I mean, she's got many of us beat by a few pounds. Anyway, but I'm glad to be here, so happy Monday. Yay! <laughs> All right, so... It's official, but you could see this, th this was going to happen. Phaedra in Atlanta is officially divorcing Apollo. Uh, duh. First of all, first of all, it's not just that he's going to prison. He seems to be, um, well, well you've, you've seen the way he's been acting towards her. You know, very violent, very, you know, screaming and yelling. And, uh, yeah, he's going to prison for eight years, but, you know, he did this to himself. And besides, he spent another five years in prison before. It's not like this is something that he is not... The point is, is that <laughs> Phaedra waited till he went in to announce that she's divorcing him. Smart. Because based on his temper, who knows what that madman would have done. So she's going to divorce him. Of course, they have the two uh, sons. Um, 
one is three and one is one or something like that. Um, she's probably going to file for solo custody. I'm not sure about this. I mean, she hired a lawyer, a real lawyer. She's not... <laughs> she's... <laughs> she's smart enough not to represent herself. The, the sons are uh, four years old and one year old, and um, she'll probably file for solo custody because you figure when, when Apollo gets out of jail, well, that's a long time. You know, eight years is a long time. And when he gets out, I think that she should go into witness protection. He, what? <laughs> you don't think he's going to come out angry based on what you've seen, how he's been acting before going in? He seems to resent her and her success and all those things, and he's never, as far as we can see, other than collecting a little check from the housewives, what is he contributing to their house? Yeah, he did have stallion booty, donkey booty, and I thought that... <laughs> well, he's got a nice body. And, sh you know, sure, they did the workout video and whatnot, but I don't know what ended up happening with that, you know? So clap if you think that she does need a divorce and to start over. <laughs> Incidentally, Phaedra and Apollo are the fifth couple in Atlanta to be divorced from the Housewives and the 21st couple in the entire Real Housewives franchises in total. Stay off reality TV. It will ruin your marriage. That's all. That's, that's all. Uh, the Real Housewives of Atlanta return on November 9th at 8 o'clock on Bravo. What do you think about this Katy Perry doing the Super Bowl thing? <laughs> then you are my people! Okay, clap if you think it's a great idea. I think my eyes are deceiving me. More people do not clap. Well, in my head, I was clapping when I heard about it. I said, that's good, until I had time to ponder. And all of a sudden, I feel as though... It's an okay idea. Let's break it down. Number one, Katy Perry is going to give us all the pageantry that we love. Firecrackers, lollipop bra, you know, like, she's going to give us all that stuff. The problem with Katy Perry is that the people in the Super Bowl stands don't care. The Super Bowl fans root for Bruce Springsteen, Bono, and the Rolling Stones. You know, they, they, they don't care about Katy Perry. Then again, Katy Perry doesn't need the Super Bowl because she, as of right now, is the best-selling digital single artist in the world. And guess what? She has more weeks at the number one spot on the charts than anyone else, including you, Mariah. You're now number two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly, Katy's number one, and she didn't need the Super Bowl to make that happen. I'll tell you what she's going to get at the Super Bowl. She's going to get... Super Bowl fans boo. And they, they, boo they, they get very impatient, like big, brawly men with a beer in each hand. You know what I'm saying? These are the same guys that crush beer cans on their heads and stuff. They don't care about fireworks and all that and teenage dream. They, like, like, we care about that, but we'll be home and we, she won't be able to hear us cheering. And even, with, even at home, like, I like Katy Perry. I like Katy Perry, don't get me wrong. But Katy Perry is not a reason to throw a Super Bowl party and have all your girls come over. Katy Perry is not even a reason to stop what you're doing and watch everything that she does. You know what Katy Perry is? No. I'll, I'll tell you what kind of time I'll spend with Katy Perry at the Super Bowl. And I'm a fan. It's just that I guess I'm not in that zone, you know, on account of my age. I, I want to see one or two songs. Like, I will Jolene and dye my eyebrows. <laughs> I leave the dye on for a matter of moments. As soon as it's ready and burning, that's when I get in the shower. I'll miss all the rest of Katy Perry and won't feel like I really missed anything. Do you go to Super Bowl parties? I don't even like Super Bowl parties. We used to go to a Super Bowl party every single year. And yeah, you know, you wear the jersey of whoever you're rooting for. And of course, the Super Bowl food is good. You know, bean dip with extra guacamole and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but on the count of all these things floating around, Ebola and whatnot, and the flu... <laughs> I need my bean dip for one. Don't talk over me while I eat it. 
And then, and then, I don't really get into gambling. I don't think I've ever placed a bet on anything in my entire life. And but the people, you know, like the Super Bowl parties, get very serious. They have like golf pencils and pads and over and under with what commercial is going to come first. What is that language? <laughs> and then the second you want to talk to somebody and say, "How are the kids?" They shush you, shush. <laughs> so I'll be in the house watching. He'll be out watching someplace else. I will be watching whatever marathon of Sex in the City or what's all, the uh, the ID channel. I don't care about the game. I kind of care about Katie, but she's part of the collateral damage. I won't be watching. But look, the Super Bowl comes on sometime in February. <laughs> Check your local listing. <laughs> I'm really happy for Kamora Lee Simmons. I'll tell you why. Yes. You are too? Let's give her a celebrity shout out. Hit it. <laughs> well, she's four months, uh, but she's, she's pregnant with her fourth child. She's not too old. It just seems like she's been around for a long time, but she still is in baby making years. This is her um, new husband. He is an investment banker named Tim Leisner. He also ho holds a, a PhD, and he's rich. <laughs> and they just got married on the sneak back in February, and now she's pregnant. With she really does know how to do it, right? Yeah. I mean, she goes from Russell Simmons and has two kids by him, just to secure that. <laughs> and by the way, each picture that I show you, observe that she's gotten prettier over the years. Because, I mean, this is good, but just watch how it ha all um, evolves. <laughs> then she has one with Jaimon Hansu, yeah. the actor. <laughs> and now she's got one with her third husband, Tim. She's like the Asian Kim Zolciak. She really does. <laughs> She has all those kids, and then she snaps back. Your neck looks really good here, um, Kimora. Um, she knows how to pick a man. She has a good work ethic, too, because let me tell you something. There are many of us, if you married, you know, a rap mogul like Russell Simmons, admit it, you wouldn't be working. Many of us. Instead, she, she uh, started that baby fat um, clothing line. You know, she, she's a worker. I don't know that many of us would say the same thing if we could just sit around and be the lady of the manor. <laughs> Darling. So good for you, Kamora. Congratulations. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez stays staying friends with her exes. Did you say um, on the um, well the other week we were talking with you and I was saying to you that um, she had dinner with her ex boyfriend, that Casper Smart. Why is my mouth so watery? <laughs> I had a Chipotle wrap before I came out here, though, and I, I have the other half sitting on my desk, and I'm hoping that the mayonnaise is not going to go bad before the show is over. You know what I'm saying? Um, I forgot to put it back in the fridge. Um, look, so she went for dinner with Casper Smart last week, and then a few days later, over the weekend, we saw that she was at the club hanging out with Puffy, her ex. Well, listen. I'm not pissed that she was hanging out with Puffy. I'm pissed at some of the comments I met from some of you young people who always try to walk out of line, talking about nothing worse than old people in the club. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Speaking as an older person who lives the club, <laughs> when I was 22 years old, 25, I used to say the same thing. Like, nobody wants to party with grandma. <laughs> unless grandma knows how to do it right. <laughs> who would be in the club with Jennifer Lopez and Puffy doesn't look like an old man. You, I mean, you know, old is relative. It's mostly how you walk, you, you know, and how you dress. And if you need assistance like this, you know, like, like I, I was asked this morning, when will I stop going to the club? I don't know. I think maybe when I'm not able to wear club clothes anymore, you know, something tight and ripped and slightly sheer. <laughs> and I, you know, and I always think that like, at least if an older person is going to go to the club, be with other more age-appropriate older people. Sometimes I feel like if you're 50 years old and you're in the club, like my niece is 23 and my nephew is 21. The three of us could go to the club, but that's when I really look crazy in the club with them. Whereas my husband, well, he's a little younger than me. He, he's, he's still, he's still age-appropriate, so it's not just me in the club, it's, look at them two old people, but we're having, we, we're having a good, listen, 
Some of us older people could show you club behavior that would shock you younger people. <laughs> Besides, going to the club is not an all the time thing, it's a sometimes thing. And over the weekend, by the way, um, Jennifer was spotted supporting Ben Affleck in his new movie, Gone Girl. She's in the theater, her feet are up on the chair, and she took the hashtag uh, with this picture, Gone Girl. She's in a regular theater. Ticket for two, please. <laughs> Jennifer, is that you? Yes. Uh, or maybe she had to take that picture because she gets her arm twisted to continue posting things on social media. I don't know. I have a love-hate relationship with social media. Tristan runs my social media and, you know, often tells me, Wendy, do you want to post some pictures or something? Like, this is what kids are, this is what people do, Wendy. You can't just sit in the house like a hermit talking about, I'm minding my own business, I want everybody to mind theirs. I'm like, okay, I'll take a picture and post it. If I were Jennifer Gardner, though, I'd be mad that the prettier Jennifer is still support. Oh! Excuse me! Jennifer Gardner is pretty. Follow what I'm saying. But Jennifer Lopez is hot. Hot and single oh. and on the prowl. Oh. And uh, yeah, I would be, I would want to shut that down. I, I would tell. And then he still allegedly answers Jennifer Lopez, you know, emails and phone numbers in the name of let's do projects and work together. Oh. Yes! Oh. Jennifer Lopez, if I were Jennifer Gardner, I would tell you, go on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love Vivica Fox. She was on TV last night. Apparently, she said something very surprising about her personal life. She's 50 years old. See, now that's Club 50. See? Yeah. The club. Anyway, um, Vivica sat down with Oprah and shared her biggest regret. Take a look. Do you ever miss being a mother? Of course. Really? If that's the biggest regret of my life that I have was that um, I didn't have a child, but I'm a good godmother. That's the one thing that uh, that I have a regret about. That would be that I didn't have a child. Really? Yes. I didn't expect that answer. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the only thing. I'll, I'll never forget seeing Hallie on the red carpet, and she just had Nala, and she says the joy that I get in her, I see in her eyes, is just like no other high that I've ever experienced. So I don't get to see my eyes in a child. Oh, she's so revealing. You know, a lot of women who pass past, you know, childbearing years, they will not admit that they wanted to have children. But Vivica, but you're a young 50. You're not like an old lady with one of these. Why don't you adopt like a five-year-old girl? Right? Like, to me, it, like... like being a mother is like one of the biggest joys. I definitely would regret it. But if I was single right now, and I was 50 years old, I would definitely adopt. I would adopt, adopt, adopt. And I mean, you know, she's been with guys in the past and, you know, had relationships. She was married to 5'9", and then she was with that um, promoter, um, I forgot his name, in Atlanta. Slim, and there's Slim, and then, and then she was with 50 Cent, but you know, so during her childbearing years, she was saying in the interview that, um, you know, she picked a lot of guys for a lot of the wrong reasons, and before you know it, a woman is past her childbearing years and their regrets, but if I were single at being 50 years old, I would definitely adopt it. I deny yourself nothing in life. <laughs> Thanks for the honesty. Vivica. Well, a lot went down over the weekend with Amanda Bynes. It's time for the inside scoop. Hit it. Vitrini. All right, Vitrini, oh, let's get to let's it. Let's do it. Should we talk about Amanda Bynes yes, first? Okay, please. so new, what's happening right now is that Amanda is now in a 5150. If you don't know what that means, it means that she's in a 72 hour involuntary psychiatric hold Whoa. in Pasadena, California. Let's talk about how this all went down. She fled New York last week, landed in Los Angeles, and. No, you forgot the big part. 
She went to LaGuardia Airport. Oh, you want to know about that? Okay, and I'll give you that too. She demanded them. She demanded to get on the plane to go to LA. They said uh, there's no plane ready. You have to wait. She, was, she didn't like that. So she jumps back in the car service. Yeah, so she gets into a fight. She gets thrown out of LaGuardia. Heads over to JFK. Gets on a flight. Comes to Los Angeles. Thinks allegedly thinks that she's being taken to the London Hotel. However, the t the car takes her to Pasadena, California, to a treatment facility where she's placed in this involuntary psychiatric hold. Yes, her parents orchestrated it. Now, her parents and the lawyers arrive shortly after, and they are now going to try to extend that 72 hours into a 14-day hold, where they can hopefully regain conservatorship of their child. Okay, so they care. Um very disturbing allegations that she made about Dr. Bynes over the weekend. All right, we're going to go backtrack a little bit, go back to New York. Yes, so she claims, uh, she went to Twitter and she claimed that her father had sexually, physically, and verbally abused her. That he, as a child, said that she was ugly, um, that he also said he wanted to have sex with her, asked to have sex with her. She said no, that the mother knew about it the entire time, but did nothing, never went to the police. She claimed that she was going to get restraining orders against her father, meeting with lawyers. Okay, so the parents respond. What did they say? Mother, Lynn responds and she says I'm heartbroken today for my husband of 47 years Rick has been the best father and husband a family can ask for he's never abused Amanda or other children physically or sexually these allegations stem from Amanda's mental state at the moment they have no basis in reality now the rest of the family also joined. not only two siblings she does nobody knows about him because they're pretty much quiet until now now they come out and they say, we are, this is Jillian and Tommy, we are disturbed beyond words that Amanda would come up with such a fabrication as a way to avoid getting much needed help or treatment. Wow. So Amanda takes this all in for a moment, I suppose, and says, I retract that statement. No, okay, maybe my dad didn't do those things, but I, I have a microchip that was planted in me that he planted in me, and that's making me talk this way. Okay, I know. So if, it's sad, though. We can't laugh, really. It's really no, quite no, a sad really sad. So, yeah, really sad story. Um, I think Dr. and Mrs. Bynes are really late in getting this new hold on her, and I think that they really do need to open their eyes to their daughter's mental case. At the same time, can you believe they orchestrated that whole trip from Los Angeles to Pasadena? Oh, it's about like, time. It's about time, yeah. Really? I know. It's a lot, but, yeah. it, but she's a lot. I think we all wish the best for her, though. Yes. In the end of the day, we're hopefully this is going to do it. Yes. I hope. Hope you think so. it's going to do yeah. it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Dr. and Mrs. Vines don't seem strong well, enough. You you're know, right. And when, they need when someone you, strong. They need. She needs parents stronger than them mm -hmm. who are just going to say, well, she's 28. What are we supposed to be able to do? When your children are your children, you fight you whether fight you're 28, hard. 58, or 8. That's it. You fight hard. All right, let's talk about Iggy Azalea. Iggy. And, their, and their marriage. Um, Iggy is apparently married, according to someone named Hefe Wine. You remember him Maurice. from Hot Topics. There yeah. he is. Mm -hmm. Just to remind people, uh, this Maurice Williams, that's his real name, not Hefe Wine, he, um, he actually claimed that he had sex tapes on her. He's the same guy who, uh, you know, who also like, had stolen all of her music. Right. He claims that he is married to Iggy. That um, they were living in the state in Texas in 2008 until this is when very she was recently. 17 years old. When she was 17 years old. And she fled Australia for a different life here. That's exactly it. They were living together. And um, in Texas, the common law marriage states that if you live together for a certain period of time and you say that you're married and you tell people you're married, then you're at common law marriage. Okay, he's a lot older than her. A lot. Clearly. Mm -hmm. It's predatory almost, yeah. I think some would say. Yeah. Now, the bad part of this is that if the judge agrees and says, yeah, indeed, this is a marriage, then he's entitled to 50% of all her music. I know you don't like that. I want to th throw up. <laughs> no. Yeah, and that's the part of the thing. So yeah, now he says he wants a divorce, and what does Iggy say? Iggy goes to Twitty and says, "We're not married. We are not married. Check the check the files. Look do, at the do what you the know court." It's really weird, Tell though. Me. I believe this guy, and I'm going to tell what? you. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Do you remember being 17 years old, fleeing your country, coming here, <laughs> and 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 meeting? <laughs> And, of course. No, I'm listen, like, yeah. And you, you're very, no, listen to me. And you're very impressionable. You yeah. need an older gentleman who, P.S., I heard that he was married with children when he got with Iggy, but. Oh, really? Like legally married. Anyway, imagine being impressionable. You know, if you're, if you're free spirit enough to leave your country, you know, drop out of school, call your mom and say, I'm not coming home, then yeah, you are free spirit enough probably to get with some guy and throw around the term husband and wife the way people do. Maybe. <laughs> you know, you know how, like, you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, lots of young people use that husband and wife thing. It's like, don't use it, don't play with that. Then I'm gonna blame it on Texas. 
Who's married after living to, with each other for just a few for, for, for a few years? It's not a marriage. Yeah, but that common law thing is always yeah. weird to me. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, but she has a new boyfriend. She does. Uh, he plays for the NBA. Nick He's Young. Not. Nick Young. Yes, yeah, so Nick Young and Iggy are doing very well. Nick actually just had surgery on his thumb, so he'll be out uh, for the next eight weeks. But she's taking very good care of him. I'm sure. She's apparently cooking him all his favorite meals, and she's been right by his side the whole time. They've been together for a little moment. Ah, yeah, and it looks like they're going very, very strong. Good. Well, Good maybe her. her next husband will be better than her first husband. <laughs> Thank you, Erica Petrini. Thank you. Head to wendyshow.com for more information on all these stories. And uh, make uh, we have more great show for you, so make sure that you keep it here. We have R&B star Janae Ioka. <laughs> Ioka. Sorry, Janae. Janae Ioka is here. She's going to perform her hit song, The Pressure. And she's also going to help me reveal this year's Soul Train Awards nominees. But up next, everybody, from Dancing with the Stars, fashion designer Betsy Johnson and her partner, Tony Dovolani. Don't miss it. Nice. This one is all about the dish. We're serving up sizzling hot topics. And she's out of jail and speaking out. I'm going one on one with the rapper Remy Ma. Plus, celebrity chef Mario Vitali heats up the Wendy kitchen. Mm. 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 Tomorrow on an all new Wendy. First guest on Dancing with the Stars. Unfortunately, they were the latest couple to be sent home. Take a look. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. To Dancing, mostly to Tony, to my fans. This has been the best, wonderful thing with my daughter, Lulu. It's just been a trip, a big trip, a trip, a trip. Nice. Please welcome Tony Dovolani and the fabulous Betsy Johnson. Hi, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Always nice to see you. Betsy. You did really well. You did really well. Yes, yes. Betsy. Yeah. It looked like you were having so much fun each week that you guys danced. We were. Yeah, oh, we, we really we did were. have a good time. Yeah. But before we even get started, I want to give you props. For what? You have become this amazing, amazing... I love watching you. Oh, thank I, you. I know. Yeah, hold on, hold on. I will tell you, because I, I, I followed you on radio. Yeah. I got to dance with you. I got to meet you. I got to meet your yeah. family. You're an amazing person. But more importantly, I'm just so happy for you with the thank success you, Tony. Yeah. You know... Tony was my partner on Dancing with the Stars I know. also. They just told me. But yeah. we were eliminated second. <laughs> no, not third. We were eliminated the second. Third week, yeah. Yeah, the third so week. I thought I'd go. I thought we'd go the second because yeah. I really screwed up the first. Were you <laughs> were you flying back and forth like I was from New York to LA? Uh, no, we actually stayed in LA for the uh, the did? entire four weeks, which was good. You now know? your family's still living in Connecticut. Still in Connecticut. Excellent. Yeah. So you it was look, good to come back home. You look different. Have you gotten face work? Oh. No, actually. You look fantastic. Thank you. I mean, you look fantastic before, but thank you. You look good. I've been Tom. eating a lot more healthier. I yeah. think that's what it is. You got to eat healthy. You got to eat to live, and just chilled out. Yeah. You look really good. Thank By you. the way, um, the mirror ball suits you well, the oh, winning thank from you. last season. I think season. that's what it was. Yes. Finally, the stress is off. <laughs> wanting to now, win. now, Betsy, um, uh, you had a wardrobe mal malfunction at one point. You tried to pull a feather boa off. What happened there? Yeah, I mean, I could have just said, forget the feather boa <laughs> yes. and continue. And then no, the cops I had started to following us. It was, <laughs> it was hooked by mistake, and it just threw me off where I landed. Oh, I'll do the cartwheel split. The thing. cartwheel <laughs> legendary. Whoa, ow, ow. You know you're going home. For, for a 72-year-old so. woman, let me tell you something. You really have the effervescence of a 25-year-old, which is to be admired. She really does. Yeah. And also, she has such Wait, a positive you... attitude through, throughout the entire experience. I mean, she never, ever, ever complained, which was weird for me, because everybody uh, always complains. What do you say, Antonio? Everybody, not just you. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll just do it. I know, I, I know. Um, now, Tony, um, you advised Betsy. First of all, they wanted you to be Betsy Johnson on that particular dance yes. that you saw, where you were wearing classic Betsy Johnson outfits. But then, yeah. all of a sudden, you got rid of the hair. Oh, you you look like a, so that? a society matron. I know. You look fantastic. I, uh, yes, and my dance. What was really oh, nice is the makeover Tony gave me because that lost, right? The first one did not work. But this one was very much, what were we dancing? We were dancing Foxtrot on that one. But it's not just the outfit. I'm talking about the hair. Well, the I makeup. did research on hair, did on, on makeup, on the outfit and all that stuff. I designed from head to toe on that one. Were you insulted? No. It was, it was so great to have Tony take over Aww. and make me experience all these different women like that's kind of a it, Lana turn I mean that's Hollywood yes right? but I can I, but I can see you've got the Betsy Johnson back yes <laughs> oh, she, yeah. she's got it back you that was throughout the week and yes. then on the day on the show day you know what it was Last interesting night, is that got off the plane she's got an amazing amazing out. heart and I wanted to make sure that she shows her inner beauty in yeah. the other way so yeah. it was pretty cool so now yeah I know, I know that you're here today with your daughter Lulu upstairs. Hey, Lulu, how you doing? Um, <laughs> how you doing? But she also joined you on Dancing with the Stars, so that must have been really comforting, like behind the scenes and stuff. Yes. Oh, Lulu's my girl. Yeah. 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 And, and look you, at that hairdo. Oh now gosh. I know, what? I know what you do in the fashion world. That's kind of a tradition where Lulu walks with you. Tell the end of every show. Yes. And. For 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. she was in the show, and we walked at the end. And then the children started happening yes. on the runway. Yes. And so it's a family children. I love tradition. That. I love that. And Tony was in on the runway in my last show. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah came out with the family. Yes, yeah, she and had this equality uh, marriage thing uh, as a theme, and we came out actually. I was yeah. her, I was her groom. So. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so now, Betsy, congratulations on your new activewear line. Oh, thank I, you. <laughs> I saw some of the pieces. Sense. Yeah. But Tell me. Yeah, it's very, like, classic, but with the blast of the neon pink. Yes. So where do we get that stuff? Um, ba -dum -bum -bum, I'm sure. For sure. Macy's and Nordstrom's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about BetsyJohnson.com? <laughs> yeah, that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before you guys forget the dot com. Before thing. you guys go, who do you think is going to win this season on Dancing with the Stars? I honestly think Janelle and Alfonso are really like they're stepping up, but I'm not. Uh, well, I think I mean Alfonso is a really good friend of mine. I think he's doing such a great job. But I think every single person, including Leah and Bethany, and this is a competitive and season. Antonio, how about him taking his shirt off? I think the ladies went nuts. I wasn't impressed nuts. by anything. I said from the very beginning when they first announced the dancers, Alphonse Rivera is going to win. Because oh, I know he's got professional training. Everybody loves the Carlton dance. And he is, he, just America loves him. He's so personable, mm -hmm. too. Exactly. I think, and he's, he's like a real dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we all think Alphonse is going to win? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tony, lovely to see you again. Betsy. I'm going to look at that Thank active you. wear. It's always nice to see Betsy Johnson, everybody. Dancing with the Stars airs Monday nights at 8 on ABC. We'll be right back. My stand-up show at the Venetian in Las Vegas is only a few weeks away. I'm working on my jokes. I'm part of the Lipstick Comedy Series. I'm performing on Halloween night, October 31st, and Saturday, November 1st. Go to wendyshow.com for your tickets, and I'll see you in Vegas. Now it's time for audience sound off. Oh, hot topics. How are you doing? Hi, Wendy. I'm Megan, and I disagree with you on Katy Perry. Okay. Um, I really think that she's a superstar. She's awesome. Yes. Everybody loves her. And I just think that she would be great at the Super Bowl. And I don't think that the Super Bowl should be paying her. her. She should be paying them. They should be paying her. <laughs> <laughs> I hear what you're saying, Megan. I love Katy Perry also. Her music makes me feel young and it's fun. But I'm just saying the audience at the Super Bowl, you know, big burly men with beer in their hands, they don't care. We care. They don't care. But they'll still think she's hot. Not when the game is going on. They're ridiculous. Okay. Thanks, Megan. You're awesome. Uh huh. 
I love your color blocking. Thank you. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? How you doing? I'm Janine, and I want to sound off on Apollo and Phaedra. Uh -huh. Phaedra, run as fast as you can, <laughs> girl. Run quit the Bonnie and Clyde act because it makes you look guilty. I agree with you because you said witness protection. She needs to go there immediately as yes. soon as he gets out. What do you think? Yeah, I think that she needs to <laughs> run, run and hide when Apollo was on the loose. Right, because basically, I never remember seeing him doing any work. All he was worried about is taking innocent people's money. That's what he was doing on the side. Just saying. Thank you for your comments. Up next, everybody, breakout music star Janae Iko is here. <laughs> On an all-new Wendy, we're bringing the heat with all-new Hot Topics. And TV, movies, fatherhood, Fergie. There's so much I want to talk to the sexy Josh Duhamel about. Plus, the transformation you won't believe. How you doing? <laughs> Wednesday on an all-new Wendy. Welcome back. Our next guest is a breakout music star. Her new CD, Sold Out, debuted at number one on the R&B charts. She's performing today her song, The Pressure. Give it up for Janae Iko. I care about you, baby. Baby, more than you'll ever know, more than you'll ever know. Please do not drive me crazy, crazy. Unless you're gonna go with me, no pressure, no pressure. for this year's Soul Train Awards, so don't go far.
There's so much more of the Wendy Show at wendyshow.com. Watch must-see moments. Catch my after show. And enter for your chance to win some amazing free stuff. Check out wendyshow.com today. still here as long as you're here um thank you so much for helping me out with thank this you for um, me. as you know this year i'm going to be hosting the soul train awards i'm going to give you all the beads and feathers and beads in it. and me and today right now are going to tell you we, we're going to reveal the nominees for the top three categories first category is best new artist hit it mac wilds <laughs> today Iko. August Alcina. <laughs> Liv Warfield. <laughs> Seven Streeter. <laughs> Nico and Vince. <laughs> okay. So those are the nominees for Best New Artist. Now let's move on to the category Album of the Year. Janae. Beyonce, Beyonce. <laughs> Janelle Monet, the electric lady. Michael Jackson, escape. Pharrell Williams, girl. Tough category. John Legend, love in the future. Uh -oh. Drake, nothing was the same. And those are the albums of the year nominees. All right, our last category is going to be um, song of the year. Janae? Beyonce featuring Jay-Z, Drunk yeah. in Love. John Legend, all of me. <laughs> Pharrell Williams, Happy. <laughs> Michael Jackson featuring Justin Timberlake, Love Never Felt So Good. Drake featuring Majid Jordan, Hold On With Me. And finally, Chris Brown featuring Lil Wayne and Tyga, Loyal. <laughs> tough, tough, uh, tough fight right there. Those are the nominees for Song of the Year. I can't wait to host. You're going to have a whole lot of fun. Today, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, today's new album is called Sold Out. It's in stores now. And be sure you watch the Soul Train Awards Sunday, November 30th, 8 o'clock on Centric and BET. Eye Candy is next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Shayla Holmes, and she's our audience eye candy of the day. Quickly, yeah! tell, where are you from, and tell us about your look. I'm from Florida, uh -huh. and I got the necklace from Target. It was about $20. H&M dress, $40, and Aldo shoes, about $70. This is a dress after my own heart. I love it. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll be right back. Thank you, Shayla. Right, go, go. I want to thank today's guest and my co-host, my studio audience. Tomorrow, from the two, celebrity chef Mario Batali is coming by. Plus, after six years in prison, my friend Rappy Remu Ma stops by as well. I love you for watching today, and I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye. Yeah.